Welcome to this episode of Dead Last, in uh, which we rank all of your favorite horror franchises. And this month, we are doing one that is very special and close to my heart, and actually a little bit close to my chest right now, because I'm wearing a little bit of a t-shirt for it. But I am a huge fan of the George Romero Dead series, so that's what we're covering today. But not only are we covering the Romero Dead series, but we're including the remakes of the Dead series. And, you know, there's a lot of them out there because Night of the Living Dead is public domain, so a lot of people have put out kind of fake remakes of it. Um, but we're not including those, and I'm also not including Day of the Dead 2 Contagium because I don't want to put myself through that torture again. Um, so we're not including that. It is not official, so it does not count. So what we are including are these six core Romero movies the 1990 Tom Savini remake of Night of the Living Dead, the Zack Snyder Dawn of the Dead remake, the Steve Miner 08 Day of the Dead remake, and the most recent one, the 2017 remake of Day of the Dead called Bloodlines. Um, how do we do this? Well, if you are a patron on Patreon, you can actually send me in your ranking. You rank the movies from 1 to 10. And what I do is I tally up those rankings. So if your movie's number one, that's one point. If you're ranked 10th, that's 10 points. Whatever movie has the lowest number of points wins, obviously. These patrons over here, these guys have sent in their rankings. Um, and we have 20 rankings in this round, which is a pretty good amount of rankings. And I also have the help of my panel here today. We've got some new faces on the panel. Um, and actually one familiar one that you've seen before, he was in the Stephen King episode, we've got Matt, otherwise known as the Perfect Meatball. <laughs> Matt, how you doing today? Good, how's it going everybody? Right on. Matt is in the special effects industry, he runs foam, you've done stuff for Walking Dead, you've done things for all sorts of movies, uh, anything that you're working on now that you can talk about? Honestly, Stranger Things, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's awesome. a lot of props for Stranger Things right now, so we got that going for us. Well, next up, we have somebody that has appeared on Dead Last before, but in a tiebreaker capacity. Uh, we have Pittsburgh resident George. What's happening, George? Hey, I'm doing all right. What's going on, brother? George actually used to write for the WWE, and I mean, since wrestling is all completely real, I mean, that had to be a very easy job, right? Well, yeah, I basically just had to sit back and watch the action and take credit. I mean, it's 100% real. Uh, and you live, like right now, you live fairly close to the Evans City Cemetery, correct? Yes, it's one exit. Also, first time on the show, uh, we have my man Sean up here. Sean, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. Sean is also an independent filmmaker. He's going to tell you about that, doing some really cool horror shorts. And he's actually uh, one of the, the guys I've played horror trivia with as well. Our mutual friend, Buzz Wallach, he started this thing called Just Scare Me back in February. Um, and, well, it was January, but the first screening was in February. And basically, it's like an accountability group for, for horror film, like people who want to make horror films and stuff. So every two months, we have to make a one to 10 minute short. Um, and if we say we're going to do it, we have to commit to it. And if we don't, if you don't uh, deliver a movie, it doesn't have to be finished, um, but you have to deliver something by the due date. And if you don't, you have to pay the group a hundred bucks. Um, usually it's only one person dips out. So we, we haven't really collected that much money from it, but it's every, every month. Um, and then, yeah, so barring one month, I've done a horror short every month. And then I'm actually prepping a new one. And then I'm prepping another one after that for when the year, new year starts. And uh, if you're interested in that, you can go on Vimeo and look up Just Scare Me for the channel, or you can follow them on Twitter at Just Scare Me. Well, let's check out this list because I think there's some pretty jarring things on here. This is one that when I first put out this call, I didn't know what would be first place and I definitely didn't know what would be last place um, because there are some pretty terrible movies in this in the, in this list. Um, but there's some pretty great <laughs> ones as well. <laughs> oh. So the question is, is which one of these is the worst in Dead Last, and which one of these is the best, and we're about to find out. 
So I want to reiterate that we had 20 rankings in total, and since there's 10 movies, the lowest possible score that a movie could have is 20 points. That would be if everybody ranked a movie number one. If everybody ranked it dead last, the highest possible score that it could have is 200 points. And coming in dead last place with 181 points is Day of the Dead Bloodline, the most recent 2017 version. This movie was ranked dead last nine times. So out of 20 people, nine of them ranked it dead last, and its highest ranking that it got was seventh place. Four people ranked it in seventh place. On the panel, Matt and George, you guys were actually in tandem. You both gave it ninth place, so second to last. And Sean, you and I were two of the people that gave it seventh place. So obviously liked it better than a few of the other entries. Sean, what about this was better than some of the other movies? Oof. Okay, so a little quick backstory. I have not seen either of the Day of the Dead remakes until I was asked to do this um, podcast. So I had to watch them back to back this week. And that might have played a little bit into why I like Bloodlines more because I, um, and I, I, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but I think Day of the Dead, the remake by Steve Miner is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. So watching this back to back, I thought it was better shot. Um, I thought it at least had some interesting ideas. Uh, I think the bub replacement of Max was maybe not executed great, but I like the idea that I, I like that they made it contemporary. That he was kind of like rapey and like stalking Zoe and stuff like that. Like I like I like the some of the ideas they did. I thought the gore was better, um, and I wasn't bored like I was in. It's it, it's generic as hell. It's not a good movie. Don't don't make mistake of me defending this or putting it in number seven, saying it's a good movie. It's not a good movie. It's just not as terrible as 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 Day of the Dead or the other two movies that I have. And that was actually my rationale for giving it a higher ranking than some of these other ones do, because seventh place is not a good score. But that means that there was three movies that I liked worse than this one and and here's my defense for this one is i looked it up on imdb and this is this guy's second movie it's his second movie and it's kind of boring and it's generic and it's bad the acting is pretty terrible there's a lot about it that is just bad but it's the guy's second movie and we're comparing it to movies from horror legends people that had a huge history of experience and background and here's this guy's second movie, and it's just as bad as some of these other ones. But I don't know. When I, like, if I have somebody that I really like and trust, it's just like, here, taste this pizza, and it's garbage. And then, like, a five-year-old kid gives me a pizza, and it tastes the same. Like, I have a little bit more respect for that five-year-old than I do <laughs> the friend of mine. But, Matt, you, you, you're making some faces. And I know you didn't like this, so I want to hear what you didn't like. This movie, it actually has effort behind it. Like, it's not a good movie, and it's not really that enjoyable to watch, but it has effort. Like, they're trying some new things. Some of the makeups are pretty cool. The acting is terrible. Uh, but, I mean, as far as that goes, I didn't, I wasn't bored. I wasn't sitting there angry at it. You know, it held my interest for the most part. The the, the rapey zombie, that, that was an interesting take on the Bub character. I didn't really hate it as much as I thought I was going to hate it, um, considering it's a direct-to-video kind of throwaway film. <laughs> there's, there's one movie on this list that I absolutely hate, and this is not it. Uh, for me, let, let me start with what was problematic. And I'm, I'm not even sure if it was really the movie's fault. Uh, I feel like with this film they were going for a more direct homage to the original Day of the Dead, obviously, Bob, and, and all of those things. So I don't mind that. I think the problem is that the original Day of the Dead created some stereotypes and some tropes that have been copied so many times by other films and series that now that we're seeing someone try to copy Day of the Dead, I feel like I'm just seeing another copy of Day of the Dead. Another problem for me was as soon as I realized that Bub was the lead singer of the Oneaters. <laughs> <laughs> the Oneaters. <laughs> 
I thought he was fun as Bub. I agree. I think him as the rapey zombie who, you know, and again, it's nothing new. The the one zombie knows a little bit more or the one zombie is a little more evolved and, you know, can lead others. Certainly not the first time, you know, that's been done. But I think he did it well. We all agree that this movie was not a good movie. But does it really deserve the dead last? Uh, this this is probably this is probably the first time doing dead last where the dead last movie I, I was kind of mad about. Like it's just like no, I don't I don't because because I mean the other movies that have been dead last that we've done, I've been like yep yep that that's the worst. <laughs> this is the first time I defend it. Let's move on to number nine um, because this was actually a very very close race. Because it's only came down to two points. And number nine with 179 points is Day of the Dead 08, directed by Steve Miner. It was ranked dead last seven times, so two less than Bloodline. And its highest rank was also seventh place, but it was only ranked seventh place twice. On the panel, all four of us, these four faces that you were looking at ranked it dead last we all all of us hated this movie more than anything else that we saw on this list and uh i mean geez just there's not much in here there's not much in here to like just overall in general i found nothing to like <laughs> not a single thing George, no, no, that's not true i like the part where they jumped out the window that all the zombies jumped out the window. That was the only part of the movie I felt was like inspired or interesting. Which was in the trailer. So if you saw the trailer, you don't even need to see this movie because it was like the only like, like, oh, that's a cool moment. Cool bit you got there. I, I would say in a positive note, it's got one of the best names of a zombie movie that I've ever heard. You know, Day of the Dead is a great name for a movie. That's where it ends right there. Uh, <laughs> I knew that this one was going to be terrible for me because when it first came out, I attempted to watch it. And I remember giving it what I always call the 10 minute test and it did not pass the 10 minute test. I turned it off and have not turned it on again until you asked us to watch it. I, I don't know. It, it was hard. I found myself losing interest several, several times, having to go back 30 seconds because I missed something, then regretting that decision. Yeah, not, not a lot. Yeah, I, I'm still mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't ask you to watch this movie. <laughs> it's Halloween, and you're forcing me to watch this garbage. I'm sitting on the couch angry. Like, like oh, from the jump. When he spits a loogie and then goes back to kissing that girl, in my head, I'm like, that's it. This already, I, I hate this. And then <laughs> Bing Rames comes back just to be like, oh, it's kind of like Dawn of the Dead remake, guys. And he's he's called Rhodes. And I'm like, no, he's not Rhodes. He doesn't even do anything Rhodes-like. And then there's a vegetarian freaking zombie in it. Oh my God. Because the vegetarian doesn't eat meat. What is this? That's it. I'm done. I can't talk about it anymore. It's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. Is the insinuation that everybody that was a vegetarian is not a killer zombie? Or is it just decision. Bud? Ooh. Not Bub. And but... yeah, they got the name wrong. And I'm like, what do you guys do? You don't even know what you're doing. Well, Matt, 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 the name Bub would have been silly. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to read you my letterbox review. <laughs> the, the longer this movie went on, the more I wanted to punch myself in the face. <laughs> the movie is shockingly bad. Mina Suvari is laughingly cast in this lead. Ving Rhames is comically wasted as Rhodes. The attack scenes are shot and edited by someone while they're being tickled. Trauma movies have significantly better gore and makeup. Hell, trauma movies have more heart than this hollow piece of shit. I refuse to believe that the same director of Friday the 13th Part 2, H H2O, and Lake Placid made something this inept. It's the only way I'll be able to sleep for the rest of my life. There's a mm. zombie who won't eat people because he's a vegetarian before he turned mm. this movie. It's this, and this was this was terrible. Out of out of the movies that I've ranked the dead last um, on on this show, this is probably one of one of the worst. Everything about it is 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 bad. I mean, and it everyone in it just doesn't feel like a part of it. Like Mina Suvari, like I don't know anything about her character. Nick Cannon is in this movie, like for I guess comic <laughs> relief. 
when I started getting the rankings, um, Bloodline was the front runner. Like the, my first like seven or eight rankings, everyone had Bloodline as dead last, and I just remember thinking like, ah, Day of the Dead Eight deserves it. And then and all these lists started coming in afterwards. They started having Day of the Dead uh, 08 ranked dead last, and I was just I was crossing my fingers, and I'm just like, please. Please get enough points to be that last, and it did it. It actually it snuck ninth place by two points. But uh, in our hearts, in the panel yeah. right here, just know that this movie it will be dead last for us. Um, so we'll move on now to number eight, going a little further up the list. And actually, number eight takes us into our first actual chunk of the Romero series because at 163 points we have George Romero's Survival of the Dead, the finale of his Dead series. It was ranked dead last three times. The highest ranking that it got was seventh place. So, so far, all three movies that we've talked about so far have reached seventh place at one point. Five people ranked this movie in seventh place. Of the panel, uh, Sean, you had it ranked the lowest. You had this in ninth place. Um, Matt and I both had it in eighth place. And George, you had it ranked the highest with seventh place. So obviously there were some things in this one that you liked a little more than others. I, I don't know. I guess I hold a little bit of you know, sentimentality for the ones that you know Romero was involved in. But I, I thought some of it looked good. Um, I, again, uh, the... The plot, I didn't love. I, I, if they had stopped at that movie, it would have been ranked dead last for me. Like if they had just, if that had been the last movie that was made, there's no way I, I would have gone higher with it. But yeah, it wasn't as bad to me as some of the others. It took me 11 years to watch this movie. And I don't mean like it took, I waited 11 years. I mean, I've been trying to watch this movie for 11 years. I would start it and get bored and turn it off and get bored and come back. And that's really what it is, it's boring. It just bums me out. Everything is boring in this movie. I think it has no life. It has no, like no pun intended. There's one arresting image of the zombie woman riding the horse. Like that's that's it. Everything else just feels, it feels mercenary. It feels obligatory. Like he had to do it because otherwise he, he, needed, he needed a paycheck. It was, it, it didn't even make me angry. It just bummed me out. You know what this movie does have for no reason? is an Asian man on a rooftop fishing for zombies. Oh God, what was that scene? I completely forgot about it until you just said it. What was that? Oh, me too, I forgot about that. I don't know, it's actually one of the few scenes in the movie that I actually really love because it's just so random and it makes no sense. And it's just just bizarre enough to just be like, what What was that? But it, it also, it felt uh, Romero-ish. I guess one, I guess the only thing that, that I can kind of defend about this one because um, I ranked this in eighth place, which wasn't uh, was not a good ranking, but it's not you know a terrible ranking. Um, is that I this movie still felt like Romero to me. Um, it just was a bad Romero, but like it it had his signature parts in it, um, unlike some other things that I'll talk about pretty shortly. And I think that's the only redeeming quality of it is that at least it kind of like it felt to me like it could have been in the same universe as dawn and day it, it obviously was nowhere near as good of a movie but it felt like it existed in that same world it's just a really bad version of that world it's just kind of corny um the acting is terrible <clears throat> and when you can say that the horse is the best actor in the movie because it was that's, I mean, that girl is unwatchable. She, I, I'm sorry, she, she's just not a good actress. And she couldn't carry that that role. And that was a pretty heavy role. The, uh, the Hatfield and McCoy kind of plot where, I think it had some good ideas where like, they come to, people come to this island, he kills them to kind of keep his island uh, refugee free. And they, he still wants to give the zombies his dignity. And the other guy is like, no, we need to kill the zombies. That's kind of an interesting idea. I just wish the execution would have been there. I wish there was more action. And the, the opening, I knew I was in trouble because the effects are terrible. I'm like, what is this terrible effect at the beginning where they shoot the zombie's head and then the top of his head lands on his neck? I'm like, what is this horrible? <laughs> the only effect in the movie that I think is worse is the 
burning zombie with the flare lighting of the cigarette effect, which is so terrible. Survival of Dead is considered, a lot of people consider it to be one of, well, they consider it to be Romero's worst movie just overall. Um, I don't, but uh, but it, it, a lot of people just, I know that there's a lot of hate for it and, it, and, it, and it's deserved. It's not a good movie. Um, and then that'll take us up to number seven, uh, seventh place movie. Um, not as bad with the points. Um, 151 points gives us George Romero's Diary of the Dead, which was ranked dead last one time, but its highest rank was number five, which is the highest ranking that we've seen so far on this whole list. Of the panel, I was the one that ranked it the lowest. I gave it ninth place. Sean and George, you guys gave it eighth place, and Matt, you gave it the highest ranking with seventh place. But I, I just have to rant about this movie for a minute because I really thought when I first sat down and I, I sketched out, before I rewatched, I sketched out my list and this movie was my dead last. Um, and it was only after rewatching uh, Day of the Dead that I was just like, oh no, okay, yeah, this, this is clearly worse. Um, but Diary of the Dead, I saw in the movie theater and I can't describe for you just how much I hate this movie. The, the found footage aspect, I think, is what throws it all off, because to make a found footage movie really work, it, it, it's really hard. It has to feel real. And nothing about this movie felt in the tiniest bit real. All of the acting felt like actors. All of the cinematography felt like cinematography. Nothing just felt like people randomly videotaping things. People were, like, the rationale for people to be shooting stuff it, it it didn't it didn't add up the whole we're gonna add in music to scare you was just it's just stupid and the hardest part about this for me why i rank this lower than survival of the dead was survival of the dead felt like romero i don't know what this feels like but it doesn't feel like george romero it doesn't feel like any of the other movies in his series I wish that I could say that in a good way of like, yeah, it felt like fresh reimagining, but it just felt so alien that it turned me off. Well, this movie's like going on a really bad haunted house, like dark house ride. You know what I mean? Like a really cheesy, poorly acted, but at the same time, it's a little bit of fun. I don't know. There's something hammy about it and corny about it that I kind of love. Like the acting is really bad. The cameraman never assists anybody or warns anybody that they're in danger, which I think is hilarious. Like, I'm like, couldn't you at least say, hey, you know, <laughs> look out behind you, <laughs> go help somebody once in a while. <laughs> out of all of them, it's, I'd watch this before, again, before I'd watch Survival of the Dead. That's how I based on it, because I actually enjoy this just for the cheesiness and for the hamminess of it all. Obviously, found footage zombie movies can work because wreck exists. And Wreck is one location, terrifying, great found footage film. Diary of the Dead is, like you said, it feels like somebody who doesn't even have a grasp on what found footage movies are supposed to be. Like you said, cinematography, like he'll turn and he won't overturn, he'll turn and stop exactly where he needs to turn so that you see the zombie behind somebody. That, it just makes it feel like so staged and that's not a feeling you want with a found footage movie and i agree with you the acting feels like it's acting and the cinematography feels like it's staged like it just doesn't work as what it's trying to do however i'd be up for re-watching this again before i'd ever watch survival of the dead again for a movie where i accept that the dead come back to life to kill the living this movie's asking me to suspend my disbelief too much <laughs> The order that I started watching, uh, I started with Day of the Dead Bloodlines. And I had made a note about that one that, it, that it applies to this as well, because I was thinking, okay, is this slow zombies? Is it fast zombies? And 40 minutes in, I realized they were neither slow nor fast. They were just well-placed and well-timed zombies. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not slowly shambling toward you. They're not racing at you. They're just sort of there when you least expect it. And, and it took a while to show that they did have a little pep in their step, but in general, they were just very quietly well-timed zombies. <laughs> and it was the same with this movie. Well, and then that'll take us up 
to number six, um, the final movie of the tail end of this list, uh, with 103 points. So keep in mind, number seven was 151 points, and number six jumps all the way down to 103 points. So now we're obviously getting into movies that people liked better. And with 103 points, we've got Land of the Dead. This movie was never ranked dead last, but its lowest rank that it got was 7th place, which I, th I think is pretty respectable, and its highest rank that it got was 2nd place. Uh, so uh, Land of the Dead got somebody's second favorite movie on this list. On this panel, um, Sean and Matt, you guys both had the lowest ranking for it, which was 6th place, which is where, where it sits on the list. Um, I had a little higher at 5th place, and George, you had the highest at 5th fourth place so obviously you liked this one a little bit more than all of the rest of us and what about land of the dead stands out for you as being um better i was able to find myself invested in a zombie as a character and i don't think that's always easy to pull off so i mean dennis hopper uh you know it was pittsburgh-ish kind of <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's what i liked about it yeah, and it's exactly where it needs to be for me. It's definitely middle of the road. It, it's like he was trying so hard to do social commentary. And it's like, okay, it, but it's, it's pretty much a remake of the, uh, the Mask of the Red Death, right? Where everyone, all these rich people are partying while the plague's outside. Mm -hmm. So he's just rehashing that a little bit. Um, it is a Super Mario Brothers movie reunion with Leguizamo and, and, and Hopper on set. I, for, I forgot the fact. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> No, you were all thinking it. You were all thinking it. I swear to God, I just that never entered my mind. And it's a million times I've seen that movie until just now. But it didn't blow my doors off. I didn't really care that much. It's just kind of a just kind of a movie. He f spends way too much time concerned about a truck. Like I know he had that idea for Dead Reckoning a long time ago. And if it was a movie called Dead Reckoning, fine. But this is your fourth zombie movie and you're of the dead series so making it so focused on get on this damn truck just was just like really misguided to me and unlike george big daddy didn't work for me at all uh he's way too on the nose like everything he does is so on the nose like every the, the casting just like the mercy killing that he does for another zombie i didn't like the the emoting um the the way he confronts Dennis Hopper at the end just didn't work for me, and uh, yeah, it just it Big Daddy was it's a good idea. I just don't think it was executed as well as he did um, with with Bub in the previous in the previous film. And uh, one last little note: I think John Leguizamo was completely miscast. This movie is called Land of the Dead, and the setup was supposed to be that you had this shining city where people were ignoring the zombies. And then you see that city and those people ignoring the zombies for maybe five minutes of the total movie. I almost wish that that was more of of the plot because I mean it it sure seems that way, and I feel like it would have been a more interesting story. But that whole subtext is just it's it's lost. It doesn't really account for anything. You spend more of the movie with the kind of dregs of society of the people that are like outside the city than you do with the rich elite. And honestly, I hate to say it, that's the more interesting story here is the snobby folk ignoring the problem and until it comes up and bites them in the ass, if I can use a little Jaws reference there. Although, um, I will give this movie lots of points um, for a couple of fun things. I mean, first of all, you've got that little sneaky uh, 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 Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright cameo, which is kind of fun little nod to Shaun of the Dead at the time. And any time that I can go to the movie theaters and see Phil Fondacaro up on the big screen, I am a happy man because I am a Phil Fondacaro fan, and uh, I don't think he'll ever see this, but I've talked about him in several videos and he is um i think one of the more underrated actors in horror and uh so big ups for including him in this movie because he was great the one of the things about like the social commentary that that feels forced is big daddy being the one to kill kaufman because how would big daddy know that he's the reason behind it all it tries to play Romero tries to play with it like you're watching it going oh he got his comeuppance from from Big Daddy and it's like well yeah but 
they didn't really know each other, so it doesn't really feel like they didn't they didn't interact, so it just didn't feel earned. A lot of it felt forced. Like when he comes upon that field of zombies that are like all hanging, and he's like horrified. He's like, ah! like how could? And then I feel like the movie is trying to get us to be like, how could the humans do this? It's, they're they're zombies that are trying to eat everybody. Why mm. wouldn't people do this? Like, mm. it doesn't it doesn't work. So, yeah, it, it's tough to make them sympathetic characters on mass. Mm, yes, I think if they had gone a little bit more down the route of having the zombies not attack people, and they've kind of like almost evolved to that point to where like Big Daddy and the crew just don't even attack people, maybe then they would have been able to do it. But I mean, they're, they're showing zombies eating people rather horribly throughout the whole movie. Well, that takes us to the top half of the list now. We are halfway through the list, and now we're getting into the good stuff. Um, and at number five, with 95 points, is Dawn of the Dead 04, the Zack Snyder remake. Its lowest rank on this list was eighth place, and its highest rank was second place. Three people ranked it second place. On this panel, George and I gave it the lowest ranking, which was sixth place, which is still a respectable number. And Matt and Sean gave it a little bit higher at fourth place. So yeah, I think this is great. This is, uh, first of all, it's way better than it has any right to be. I'm not, well, okay. I, 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 I'm not somebody who's precious about remakes. I don't think that any movie shouldn't be remade. I think if you have a story to tell, tell it. And if this, if, you, if you're gonna try to do something different with the, with the uh, source material, go for it. I was blown away by this movie from start to to the to the point where you get to the um, Johnny Cash song is brilliant. Love it just the energy is just there through the whole movie. Really like the acting. Really like the cast. The only thing that I don't like about this movie is the James Gunn of it all, which is the um, zombie baby Mackay Pfeiffer and his wife subplot like that's the only thing that doesn't work in this movie for me um everything else i just have a blast with this movie i just think it's so much fun so kinetic um i think the andy character the way that was executed is is excellent like across the way and they're communicating like i i he doesn't speak a word of dialogue until until like he's already dead pretty much he's about he's a been bitten and i love that character i felt genuinely bad and all it was was them shooting people and communicating with a whiteboard it's just i just really think this movie is really 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 good uh sean pretty much summed it up but the opening of that film alone gives it this rank because the opening like sean said is one of the greatest openings i've ever seen like in a horror movie period it's scary it's terrifying it's your family trying to eat you and they're fast and they're running down the hallways. A little girl, it's all messed up. The neighborhood's exploding. That's like the Saving Private Ryan opening of Horfa. I mean, it, once that opening hit, I was like, okay, I'm in. Let's go. This is probably one of the few movies that I could name this. But I can tell you the exact point that I go from, I love this movie, I love everything about it, this is a great movie, to just being, oh, okay. And the exact moment that I kind of stop caring about this movie is when the van load of other people show up. Because up until this point, it has been a very tight character drama. You kind of know everybody. It's been very tense. And then all of a sudden, like, 10 other people show up. And from that point on, I don't really know who anybody is. There was a point in the movie theater when somebody died, and I actually turned and was like, who, who was that? Who died? And... From that point on, it became an action movie, and it didn't feel like that same movie. And I don't think it's bad. The second half of that movie, when the other characters show up, it's not a bad movie. It just feel that part feels more generic to me, although it has some saving things. I also love the bit with Andy on the rooftop. That's, that's a great bit. I still love the shot of the truck going out and the ocean of zombies surrounding them will always stand out as being amazing to me. But just... It, it never lived up to that potential to me of that first half. I mean, don't let my ranking fool you. Th that's not to say that I dislike this movie at all. Uh, sort of where on the lower end, you know, the, the difference between one number and another is splitting hairs. I feel like that's where we are here, too. I really enjoy this movie a lot. I as well saw it in the theater. The person that I was at the movie theater with 
was one of those people that, that wanted to solve the movie's problems, you know, before they did. And uh, they were saying, why wouldn't you just go to an island? Why wouldn't you just go to an island? So it was just such a fun payoff listening through the, the credits and the radio transmissions and all of that. So, yeah, that, I thought that was wonderful. Okay, so now going on to number four, uh, we're getting into the top of the list here. So everything now is going to be damn good. And speaking of damn good, number four is Night of the Living Dead, 1990, directed by Tom Savini at 82 points. This is a remake that wasn't really that loved at the time, but has grown over the years. And the lowest ranking that it got is seventh place, which is which is okay. I, I, I don't think it is seventh place at all, but its highest ranking that it got was number one. This is the first movie on the list that anybody ranked in first place. Two people ranked it as number one. On this panel, there was a lot of consistency. Matt, George, and Sean, all three of you guys ranked it as fifth place. And I was the only one that ranked it a little higher. I gave it fourth place. This was one of those movies where when I was a kid and I would go into the local independently owned video store, the the cover of it got me. You know, I already knew the original and I just loved it. And I probably, you know, was one of the few people that actually rented that movie from that place. But it always has a special place in my heart. It's one of the reasons I love Tony Todd. I mean, Tom Savini, Pittsburgh. I, I feel like, you know, like you said, remakes. If you've got a good story to tell, tell it. It's not bad because it's a remake. This certainly is the case. I feel like they changed it just enough for me to like still be invested. It, it, there was a couple twists and turns which I appreciated from it. The uh, practical effects, come on. This is the reason I do what I do. And, and this movie's all practical effects. And yeah, I mean, the Pittsburgh thing. I went to school in Pittsburgh. I went to the Art Institute. I love that town. And just the energy, I don't know, it was all there for me. It's it's not a great movie. It's not a perfect movie. And I, I do like the ending where she shoots. Uh, <laughs> towels. Yeah, it's great. I think that's a great little play on the whole thing. I don't know. I just, yeah, it's it's fine. I, I love Savini too. I know I know he gets a lot of flack, but uh, the 10-year-old of me still loves Tom Savini, so... The, the top five are negligible, the, 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 my rankings. Like they're, I like all these movies a lot. It's just, I'll have to, just for the purposes of my brain, I have to pick what, one thing that I don't like as much as the one, so I put it down a notch. And for me, uh, Night of Living Dead, I love it. I think it's great. It's one of my favorite remakes. I enjoy watching it over and over again. The one thing I will say is that their rating hurts the movie. Um, it's not as gory as it, could have been or should have been, especially with Tom Savini at the helm, who I think is the greatest effects person of all time. That's the only negative I have for it. It's just, a, just it doesn't, it just feels a little too watered down because of the rating, because of the MPAA making it, having to get it to an R rating. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't really have anything to complain about. I really, really enjoy it. And I love that, I, I absolutely adore the twist that Barbara is a pro becomes a proactive badass character in this movie that, over the first one. I think that's that was brilliant. It's such a simple simple decision to make, but it works in the movie's favor so well. Well, and, and you make a good point too because that twist kind of predates the point in Hollywood when that became a very popular thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know you were saying that there's not much that you could think of to, to talk bad about this movie, but there is one thing. I, I have this movie ranked highest out of all of us, but there's one thing that I will talk about, and it is that dummy hitting his head off of the gravestone in the beginning, which is probably yes. the worst dummy in yes. all of film. <laughs> it's like... It is. This is a great remake. It is because it actually it's just a, it's enough of the original story, with enough twists. I, I know back in the day it was criticized for being too slavishly um, similar to the original, which I get because it, it, a lot of the story beats are the same. But the modernization of it did work. Um, I thought that the characters were a little deeper. Um, I love because one of the things that I analyze when I rewatch this is the whole dynamic between um, Cooper and, and, um, and, uh, oh my God. Ben. Ben, yeah, jeez, I don't know why. <laughs> um, is, 
it, it's such a silly argument between the two characters, and I just love that they that they throw a lampshade on that with her with with Barbara just being like, let's just walk out, and no one listens to her, and that's all they had to do was walk out, and they would have been fine, and. They were just so wrapped up in their own arguments that they couldn't see past it and they just couldn't get past their own biases and, and anger to see the actual answer. And that little nugget, I think, really solidifies that movie as being a, a deeper movie than it really probably should have been. And and I love it. it, it when I, It's another one of those movies when people talk about remakes, it's on my list of like, yeah, this is this is a good one. And that will bring us up to the next one up on our list. We're in the final three now. Um, and number three and number two, this was a really, really close race. There's only one point difference between number three and number two. And at number three, with 54 points, is Day of the Dead. Its lowest ranking that it got was fifth place. And its highest ranking that it got was first place. Four people ranked it in first. On this panel, all four of us ranked it in third place, um, which is where it is on the list, and most likely deserves to be, I think, because, I mean, this is a pretty damn good flick, even though people hated it when it came out. David, that is entertaining. It's violent. It's gory. I love Rhodes. Rhodes is one of the best villains. Uh, over the top, great performance. Um, yeah, it's, it's got uh, that sense of uh, claustrophobia. You know, they're all trapped underground and the zombies are out. And, you know, and they're fighting on the inside. It's got a lot of good commentary there, but it, it, it's definitely more of just a straight horror film than it is uh, a commentary, I think. It's just got um, great characters, great effects. Uh, I, I, I like Day of the Dead. It's, it's a fun time. When I was a kid, the only thing I ever ordered out of a Fangoria magazine was like a fake latex slashed throat that attached in the back. And it, it was after watching Day of the Dead and it, you know, I just wanted to you know, make zombies and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's what inspired it. Again, like you said, the gore, I think the effects are still fun to watch to this day. Um, I love Bub. I think that the social commentary is you know, more subtle, much more effective. There's not a lot to not like about it. I just want to say, this to me is the gold standard for gore effects across the board. If Absolutely. you want to show somebody why you like gore, this is the movie you show it to them. The gag with the zombie sitting up out of the, off the table and the guts falling out that they repeated on Walking Dead is one of the greatest, to this day, I still think it's one of the most greatest magic tricks I've ever seen in a movie. It's so amazing. Everything, this is Tom Tomini working at his highest caliber. The blood looks amazing. One of my least favorite things in horror movies is how bad the blood looks when it's like almost like translucent. You don't have that here. This is dark red. You can tell it's red, but it's dark, it's thick, it's brilliant. Just everything about the, the aesthetic of this movie. I love the opening where they go to the, the city and all the dead coming out and the paper flips over, says the dead walk. And you see like just all that and the zombie with like all of it. It's just the zombie with the tongue hanging out, like with the title card. like. It's just this movie. It's so good, and I know that he got. I know he got his uh, his script like gutted in terms of what his ambition was. But what we what we got was great. You know, another thing that we haven't talked about yet is Bub. Um, this was the first movie that had sort of a zombie that was sympathetic. That was a character. Expert, expertly done. Yeah, he's the best actor in the movie. <laughs> like yes. hands down. Yeah. And he, he's the best now, actor in several of the movies. Yeah, <laughs> very true. The character has no dialogue except for like "Hello, Aunt Alicia," and it's just so subtly done, and so well thought out. And it's just a really clean character arc, and it just it works so well. And I think that no one has ever done it that expertly before. I have always wanted to see more of what happened to Bob afterwards because he, he can't go back to being a regular zombie at that point. So what? if, if there's any character in the Romero universe that I want to know what happened afterwards, it's Bob. Uh, Bob is so sympathetic. 
like he's the most sympathetic character in the movie. I genuinely like felt something for him. Bob was the first time that for me watching a zombie movie, I had the, the impression, oh wait, we're the bad guys, not them. We're the problem. You know, humanity, it, it, you know what I mean? Like that's what he's really trying to say. Day of the Dead was the first movie that made me kind of feel that way. And it's because this zombie was a sympathetic character. And we got to see, you know, humans arguably not at their best. Rhodes isn't, <laughs> Rhodes isn't a role model? Wait, am I watching the movie wrong? I think I'm watching it. <laughs> All right, so now we're in the in the top two. And again, like when we got to this part of the list, this, this was the one that I wasn't sure what was going to end up up near the top of this list. And number two, only one point above Day of the Dead with 53 points is the 1968 original Night of the Living Dead. Its lowest rank that it got was sixth place, and the highest rank that it got was first place. Five people ranked it first place. Um, out of us, uh, me and Sean both ranked it second place, and Matt and George both gave it first place. So pretty unanimous. All four of us kind of had it up near the top. It was just maybe some liked it a little bit better than others. Um, but Matty, you had this as first place. So this is your favorite. It's pure nostalgia. It's one of the first four movies I saw when I was a young child. My dad's like, you got to see this movie. Scared the hell out of me. I mean, the zombies are, they're slow. The, the opening zombie is terrifying. I mean, just really scary. He's coming at you slowly. He's, you know, you see him in the distance, but he gets getting closer. So you're not sure what's going on. And then it's just this horrible, like she's running for her life for the next 15 minutes. And it's scary. And he just keeps coming. And then the ending, it's it's such a gut punch. It, exact word. Watching that ending for the first time is sh genuinely shocking. And not a lot of movies could pull that off. Because you really like this guy and you're rooting for him and they're just like, oh, there's one, boom. Not even thinking, not even checking. Such a human thing to do. And also when Johnny comes into that house at the end and she's like screaming his name because Johnny's going to eat his own sister is, again, a gut punch to me. It's just a horrifying thing to happen. I just, I love Night of the Living Dead. I love it. I don't think a lot of people really uh, remember it. The, the Hinsman zombie, the very first zombie that you see, he's kind of fast. Like, he's not and slow smart. all the time. Yeah, he's using rocks to smash windows, and he's kind of, he's not, he's not not running, but he's definitely moving at a quicker pace than uh, than other zombies. I don't know if he was just fresher or what, but, but man, he's, he's a little quick. Everything that he tried to do worked, and that's what I like about it. There's no... Uh, you know, kind of cut the shit moments where I just go, okay, I gotta overlook that. Like, there are no moments like that with Night of the Living Dead. And we keep talking about how, you know, this theme throughout Romero movies is that one zombie that, you know, is evolutionarily a step ahead. There's even some seeds planted of that here. Josh, like you said, using a rock to hit the window. The little girl zombie uses, like, the gardening tool to stab instead of just reaching with her fingers and biting. So, I mean, you know, if you look back, that possibility was there even then. I just, again, the racial tensions, the social commentary. I know we keep saying social commentary, but it just works. The, the thing is, the message of that movie is still relevant today. It still goes today. So, I mean, that's why, and this is an all-time classic. There's no, there's no denying that. Whether you have it at number one or two, it doesn't matter. You can't deny the significance, the importance, the it, the influence. Even people who aren't even like horror fans will talk about the zombie apocalypse, and that's all because of this movie. That's, I think, a lot of the thing that a lot of people don't realize is before this movie, the concept of zombies didn't really exist like this. The be move, zombie movies before Night of the Living Dead were people that were alive under a Haitian voodoo spell. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the concept of undead people who need to be shot in the head because they're eating human flesh not brains human yes. flesh yes. Um, that that all stems from this movie like if it weren't for night of the living dead we wouldn't have any zombie movies i'm sure there would have been some sort of variation on it at some point but this was where it stems back to and i think that it, it doesn't get 
that credit that it, that it kind of needs. It. This was the kicking off for an entire genre. Exactly. Um, the, the, name, the name of the movie is Night of the Living Dead. When you hear that title, you're like, B-movie, schlock. Any, this is anything but. This is like uh, amazing acting. You care about the people inside the house, which you can't say for a lot of other films. Like, like every character, you're like, oh, I hate that guy. Or, oh, oh man, I really hope they make it. I mean, that's, that's an amazing thing to pull off. Yeah, and, and like back to the ending too. It's not just, not just Ben getting shot in the head. It's what ha it's like the photographs afterwards where they take his body and throw him on the fire. It's just so dark and you're just like, and this is again, 1968. Horror movies were not this, you know? They just weren't. And there's a reason why any, this, there's a reason why this movie more than any other movie from that era in American cinema, especially horror cinema, has stood the test of time. And hey, uh, it's public domain, so if you want to make your own version, I guess go go ahead. I'm doing it right now in my backyard. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm on it. Okay, and that brings us to the top of our list, the number one movie. It's the only one left. I guess it should be kind of easy to figure out. But with a pretty low number of points, with 39 points, we have Dawn of the Dead. The lowest ranking that this movie got was fifth place, and the highest ranking that it got was first place nine times. Nine people ranked this as their number one movie. And on this panel, um, it's actually the complete opposite of Night of the Living Dead, in which Matt and George both ranked it as second place, whereas Sean and I both had it as our first. And I think it should be obvious. It's my favorite. I'm wearing the Monroeville Mall t-shirt and i don't know uh how many people know this but i worked in the monroeville mall for years i worked there i probably worked there for like six or seven years and uh they used to do tours of the mall there would be comic conventions and like horror conventions and they would actually do tours of the mall and take people through and they would usually have cast members i remember the um like the escalator zombie he was always there at the tours and he would always do his escalator bit um, on the escalators. It was always a lot of fun and every once in a while you'd see like the cast coming through like Ken Foray be strolling through with like a pack of horror fans and stuff and the elevator that Steven gets killed in looks exactly the same. Not only do I think that this is a great zombie movie, I think this is just a great movie. Its characterization is just fantastic. You get to know and really care about every single person in this movie. And again, it's a pretty tight cast. I mean, it's really only four four people that you're focusing on. And you get to know them and understand them and you feel them. They all have very distinct personalities. And it it's I think it's just so well written. It does have a social commentary, um, but it doesn't beat you over the head with it. I mean, the consumerism is there in the background, but it doesn't it's never overstated and it just feels right um it looks it looks like we may have lost george due to some technical difficulties um but maybe we'll we'll see if we can get some input from him later if we don't get the stuff to edit into the video maybe we'll post it up on the page afterwards um to get his insight on why he liked dawn of the dead i was watching this with ayumi who's from japan so she's only been in america for probably eight years now and she, it was her first time watching it and at the end of it, she goes, wow, this movie's how old? I'm like, well, I, I was born in 78, so it's 42 years old. And she goes, so nothing's changed. <laughs> this movie is more relevant now than it, it, it was then. It's watching it again, and I've seen this movie, I don't know, five, six times. But every time I watch it, I find some new stuff to love about it. I mean, some of the effects now you look back are a little corny, but uh, at the time, you really got to put it at the time that, that was like groundbreaking awesome stuff it's a good time i love it i love it this is a tattoo a bunch of us got when romero passed away it's his glasses and his signature when he's he always signs saying stay scared um this is the huge reason why i have this tattoo and he was this movie i saw this before night of the living dead um this is the first movie that i actually wanted to pay attention to a director we talked about how Day of the Dead's gore effects hold up. Dawn of the Dead doesn't have that. 
the zombies look blue and just weird and stuff like that. But that's part of the charm and kind of part of why I love it so much. And it's and it's lighthearted. It still has humor. It's just, I don't know, it's just a well-rounded, great zombie film that like, and it, like you said, it's not just a good zombie film, it's a great film. You know, I actually want to talk about the fact that the zombies are basically just like people but blue. One of the things that really bothers me about modern zombie movies and even some of the later Romero movies is that I think people forget that one of the scariest things about zombie movies is that they're just our friends and loved ones just dead and coming after us. They go from being like ourselves but dead into being monsters. Yeah. And in Dawn of the Dead, they're not monsters. They're, they're, they're people still. They're just dead people. And I feel like them just being blue... Um, I know it's kind of silly when you're watching it and everything now and like a modern audience is looking at it. But the thing is that you can still relate that that's a, that that's a person. Like that is just a guy that used to be your neighbor. And now he's, now he's dead. It's most horrific though is when Steven gets it, because he gets it bad, yeah. and when he comes back, it's terrifying. He is acting the hell out of that zombie, too. I yeah. mean, he yeah. really is bringing him, or he's dragging his ankle like that. I'm like, how yeah. the hell is he even doing that? Yeah. <laughs> it looks like he could break his ankle at any second. Yep. This movie was always being number one in my heart, mainly for a lot of nostalgia factor, but also because I think it's a great movie. And so there you have it. That is 10 movies ranked from dead last all the way up to first. And here is a brief recap of where we all ranked. So in dead last was Day of the Dead Bloodline with 181 points. Coming in at number 9 was Day of the Dead from 2008 with 179 points. Survival of the Dead came in number 8 with 163 points. It's Predecessor, Diary of the Dead, came in number 7 with 151 points. Number 6 was Land of the Dead, also the predecessor of Diary of the Dead, at 103 points. Coming in at number 5 is the remake of Dawn of the Dead from 04 with 95 points. Number 4 was the remake of Night of the Living Dead from 1990 with 82 points. Number 3 is the original Day of the Dead with 54 points. Number two, just one point less at 53 points, was the original classic Night of the Living Dead. And finally, in number one, with 39 points, was Dawn of the Dead. There we go. I think that, I mean, I think that's a pretty good ranking. I, I definitely would have put uh, Miner's Day of the Dead remake. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a travesty. That's a think, damn travesty that that's not dead last. I think that's the only thing on that list that I would uh, have a big issue with. But other than that, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm pre I think everything works out pretty well there. But if you don't agree and you think that there's something on this list that should be around, let us know down in the comments. And I know that you will. Um, you definitely will. Um, let us know what you want to see in other places. And if you want to help contribute to these rankings, if you think, hey, these guys are full of it and I need to have my voice be heard, go to patreon.com slash movie timelines, become a patron. All of the patrons get to submit rankings every month for these videos. I know I'm getting rankings for our next video as we speak. So you go sign up there and you can participate as much as you want and your voice will be heard. These guys over here did participate, so these are the guys that send me rankings. Thank you to these guys. And these guys right here are the patrons on Patreon.com. You can be a patron and you don't have to participate if you don't want to, I mean, if you don't want to sit through some of these movies, I don't blame you. Um, so I understand that. But you can become a patron and just help contribute to the channel. Um, you could also just like, subscribe, share this video out, you know, do all that good stuff. I also want to say a quick thank you to my panel. Thank you guys for appearing. Sean, thank you very much for your first showing up on Dead Last. Um, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I would love to do it again, just not for Hellraiser. <laughs> Matt, this is your second appearance, and I thank you for appearing once again, uh, contributing, because you always got that, that fun backdrop that we got back there. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. just covering all the bases. Yeah, <laughs> Sean, it was really nice meeting you too, man, and, and George too. Absolutely. Uh, and we all had the same kind of mindset. 
which, yeah. which, I, which was relieving to me. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, you guys all were angry by Day of the Dead. <laughs> I want to thank George, even though he uh, he dropped off of the call. Uh, hopefully we'll get as much as everybody. I want to thank him for appearing. And I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you very much for doing so. And I appreciate it. And we'll see you in one more month for more Dead Last. But we'll see you in one week for another great video. Thanks a lot, guys. And we'll see you later.